Okay, we're going to do a little update on our round two mower setup and specs video. To start off with, somebody said they wanted to see under the mower deck of the BX tractor, so here we are. We're going to... Oh, come on. Let me have a little bit of fun. This was the easiest way to raise it. I'll put it back down. I'll use the traditional approach. Okay, let's get started here for real. We're gonna go through some of the comments from the round number two mower setup and specs. There was a few things that I needed to correct or at least need to comment on. A couple things just kind of left out of the episode. So here we go. Here's the most common comment. Why didn't you compare or mention the BX drive over deck, the easy over deck, instead of the manual connect deck? That's a good question. I addressed it on my website in the written version and for whatever reason just forgot to mention it in the video. The main reason is I couldn't find one. Not only did this tractor not have one, uh, I asked on Facebook, I uh, got several responses from folks that, you know, they didn't have the drive over deck. It became clear that there just aren't very many Kubota drive over decks out there, even though it was introduced, I believe, in 2017 or 2018. Uh, quite, quite a while back, there should be plenty. And I think some other comments we got help explain why there's not many out there. From Chris Nash. Love the video. When shopping for a subcompact tractor, I ask each dealer to show how to uninstall or install implements so I could decide. I specifically remember the Kubota tech saying not to bother with an undermount and I should go with a rear attachment. So this dealer recommended against the bend mount mower entirely, apparently. Lone Star Millennial said, First, I wish I had bought the drive over mower deck option that the dealer talked me out of. Here's another one from Chuck Quinn. Excellent video as always. I have a BX. Yes, the deck's a pain to remove and install because of the PTO shaft. And yes, they make a drive over deck, but every dealer tries to talk you out of it. My dealer didn't have one on site and he probably had 50 tractors available for sale out on the lot. So really that seems to be the theme. The Kubota dealers apparently recommend against getting the drive over deck. Now I have some theories on why that might be, but I don't think they're actually necessarily related to the quality of the Kubota drive over deck. I think it's related to the other color, but I'll not go into that anymore here. Now let me read one more comment about the drive over deck from a guy with a handle tractor lover. Putting the mowing deck on a Kubota is always painful, even if you have the drive over deck, because of the way the mounting brackets line up with the deck. The quick PTO shaft connecting handle also always bends and is a pain. I have the drive over deck and my neighbor has the manual one. I wish I had chosen the manual deck for my Kubota BX23S. Here's another one. I have the Kubota BX drive over option on my 2380. The sales staff didn't seem to like it, but I still opted for it. Biggest plus to me is not having to reach underneath to hook up the drive shaft. Boy, I understand that. The biggest con is the deployable ramps Kubota uses and the amount of frame that stays with the tractor. I actually don't use the ramps, I just detach the mower from the frame and then pull it out the side like a standard deck. The additional framework has not posed a problem for me yet. I still find it a little easier than a standard deck, but obviously not as easy as the JD Auto Connect. So, the commenters are right overall that it was not an apples to apples comparison, but I feel like this was a sort of a fair comparison because if you go to your Kubota dealer, they're going to sell you the deck that we demoed here, unless you essentially go against them and beg to get their easy over deck. If you go to the deer dealer, you're going to get the deck that I showed. Here's a portion of Neil Messick's comment that is relevant while I'm talking about this as well. You also forgot to point out that your tractor has the optional auto connect PTO. That's not standard. In parentheses, it's what seems to cause the most adjustment issues, at least the ones I've tried. Neil, you're right. The standard deck for the deer is a drive over deck with a manual PTO connection. So you actually can't get the deer mower without the drive over. It's just, it's standard. It's not even an option. The Auto Connect PTO is an option. I believe the list price for it is $522. Of course, if you buy it with the tractor, you'll get you know, some dealer discount there. It is an add-on. As for the adjustment issue on the PTO, the number one thing there is to make sure that the PTO is in the rear only position. That allows that mechanism to move as well as the blades on the mower to move such that when it comes together they can move and allow themselves to make the connection. That's actually the number one. If you try to leave the PTO in mid 
or mid plus rear. Any, anytime you have the mid PTO engaged, it does not allow that mechanism to move. And it can go in and it can jam against the front mechanism. Got this comment from Tim KD5VMV. He usually just says the other Tim with tractors. Long time commenter, thanks Tim. I have said this before and I'm gonna say it again. I absolutely love my BX. We hear that a lot. It's a fantastic little tractor. That being said, I can't stand to take the deck on and off. John and Neil make it look effortless, and you even made it look easy. I made it look easy? I certainly wasn't trying to make it look harder than it is. And yeah, I'm a little chunkier and not quite as uh, in shape as either John from a Ritter Bit Will Do or Neil Messick. Yeah, both of those guys are better looking than me, I think. But hey, I can't help it. I certainly didn't try to make it look extra hard. I just tried to go through the steps um, as a someone with a minimal amount of experience would do because I'd only done it, I think, three times uh, when I did that episode. But I certainly was not trying to make it look worse uh, than reality. Okay, some more from Neil Messick's comment. The only bits you missed on the BX were the size of the deck belts. Oh my goodness, I did miss that. The left and right leveling springs and that Kubota offers three decks, fine cut, standard, and drive over. Neil, have you got a video going through those three different deck options? That might be a great idea for you to do an episode on that. I'm certainly not the expert. You put a note in about the welded rod on the deer around the bottom edge of the deer deck. The BX edge is rolled. Yes, it is. The BX edge is kind of rolled up to provide some strength there as well. And really, I've never seen any of these tractors with destroyed or even rusted decks. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever heard of a deck being destroyed either on either tractor. So I just noticed it was tougher looking. I don't know if it needs to be. Joey Schaffner said, wish I had a hobby farm. It would give me an excuse to buy a subcompact tractor. Hey, Joey, look back at our early episodes. We had no hobby farm. We barely had enough room to have a tractor. Look at John Ritter, a Ritter bit will do. He has less property than we had in, in our last house. If you've got space to store it and you got money to buy it, you can get a compact tractor. These things are relatively inexpensive for all the features you get. Some folks are complaining uh, about the sixteen dollars to $18,000 you might have to spend on a, a, on a tractor mower and loader. Uh, but really, for all the hydraulic function, the PTO function, there's a lot of complexity in here for that amount of money. I actually think they're a pretty good value. And one more factor to consider, Joey, is the resale value. Both the green and the orange varieties have good resale value. We might get into that later. Pastor Cody Sutterfield. As a BX owner, I can hardly get my deck on and off. Sorry to hear that, Pastor. But I know a way that you might be able to solve that. Okay, here's a comment by Graham McAllister. As a BX25D owner who has had the deck on and off a few dozen times, that was a real world demonstration of the effort required to remove and install the mower deck. There are times when getting the rear latches lined up is a bear. It's not the worst job in the world, but you certainly don't look forward to it. You tend not to take it off for convenience, but only when absolutely required for rough terrain work or maintenance. Others have mentioned using the lower 90 degree setting on the gauge wheels. This helps when setting the mower out so that the bolts don't hang up on the mower arms. This doesn't work on mine as the mower body is touching the ground when the lowest wheel setting is used. Okay, let's have a look at those extra holes. This is just a mistake I made. I just really didn't think about it that long. Let me see if I can let the wheel all the way out of there. There are two holes and I use the top one. I don't know, just handiest. Let me see if I can actually use the bottom one. There was another comment about replacing these rings or replacing these entire pins with something that was faster, easier to remove. That's a, that's a good idea. Entirely possible. Great comment. Okay, so there's two holes. I've now got it in the bottom one, and I let the deck all the way down on the, the ground, ready to remove it. And sure enough, these wheels do not touch the floor. So uh, another commenter had mentioned that when they had them in the lower holes, it didn't work. So we have the papa bear hole, the mama bear hole. We need the baby bear hole, right? We've got too high and too low. We need just right. We'll check this side too. This one's almost touching the floor. I mean, it's not holding any weight. That one's not even close. So that doesn't work either. Now, having said that, 
the bolt hitting the mower frame up under there, uh, there were so many comments on that, and frankly, it didn't really bother me that much. I guess I expected that there would be some maneuvering required to get it out. I, I wasn't trying to make a big deal of that. I was just kind of going through the removal and what I was encountering, uh, like I always do. Okay, let's take this shield off. I haven't had this side off yet. I had the other side off in the prior video. And the part I failed to mention was this double V-belt. Let me see if I can get you in there closer. So it's a double width belt, two V's in it. So you can see both of the V's there. So this double V belt should be stronger than a single belt, like is on the deer mower. There's a little bit of history here about these belts. Actually, this is where John Ritter and I first met, or at least first got acquainted for real. I tore up a belt on my deer 54 inch mower. You can go back and find a video on that. And I did it with abuse. I was mowing over corn stalks that were as high as my head. Should have been using a brush hog, but I didn't have one. And I backed over them. It's one thing to have driven over them, but I had already kind of mowed them down and I backed over them and the mower came up under there, shot all the corn stalks right up into my mower deck. And then when I heard it smoking, I ignored it. Yep, that's right. And that's why I've always warned you ever since. If you hear a belt slipping, you stop. Figure out what it is. If you smell it, stop. Figure out what it is. Anyway, that's how I tore up my belt. I don't remember how John tore up his belt, but he posted a video of his mower deck and how much easier his belt was to replace than mine. And it was a little bit easier to replace the belt on this unit than it was on my uh, deer mower. I don't exactly know why John's belt broke or needed to be replaced. You may have to watch his video for that. Maybe he'll explain. But the double V should be stronger, but one thing we noticed from that comparison between he and I was this was also a lot more expensive belt. Mine was, I believe, $80, which is not cheap. And I believe John's was either $100 or $120. John, you put a comment below and uh, let me know if you can remember the price of yours. Or we can go back and watch those episodes. Uh, maybe we'll see that. I'll put a link to John's episode where he replaced his belt and a link to my episode in the description. Okay, for you Kubota owners out there, I've got a little bit of bonus material. Hold it, that's not right. My dad has a little bit of bonus material for you. Now, if you've been a regular viewer uh, of our channel, you know that my dad is, well, a pretty wise man and he's got a lot of experience. Specifically with large lawnmower tractors, he had a John Deere 750 and then he later traded that for a John Deere 770. The 750 and 770 are a lot like B-series Kubotas nowadays. They were both tough gear-driven tractors but they didn't have auto connect drive over decks. Well, my dad's did. Check this out. Well, I'll be. You've had a drive over deck all along and you didn't even know it. Now notice I removed those two plastic shields, but other than that, that deck is tough as nails. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this with a loader. In fact, I'm not recommending doing it at all. But hey, notice I put two blocks of wood in front just to give a little bit of a ramp there as we were coming off. I would move those blocks of wood around to the back if we were coming on, it might work. Of course, you still have the manual connection, but at least you don't have to drag it in and out. The main thing to watch is these springs right here. Make sure your front tires stay away from those springs. There's room enough to straddle, I believe, but make sure they are far enough apart. Folks, we really appreciate your positive comments on these episodes. Uh, this review has is, is not been easy because of the, well, the inflammatory nature that seems to surround any sort of comparison like this. And your comments is actually what's been able to keep us going. It's, it's, it's refreshing. Now we get a comment or two once in a while that I just don't understand. Uh, and and I, I want to kind of go over one of those uh, today. I actually deleted the comment because, well, it, was, it hurt too much and it was not accurate. One commenter said that I couldn't possibly be fair because I owned John Deere tractors. I had never owned uh, a non-John Deere tractor for more than such and such years. And, etc. etc. and said that therefore I couldn't be fair. Folks, fairness 
is not based on what tractor you own. Fairness is based on your character. I'm not going to let my character be destroyed by a given color of tractor. That's, that's totally goofy. So I may make a mistake. I may miss the V-belt. I may not know that there are three decks available for the Kubota instead of just one, but I am certainly not going to intentionally mislead. And that's the point of these follow-up episodes is to make sure that, that uh, I'm responding to any comments from those that, that might have a different angle or uh, more information. Hey, thanks for watching. We really appreciate your comments again, and we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.